Shalom again from Interfaithfulness, where we're building bridges, where history builds walls. And right now we're building a bridge over troubled COVID-19 waters. A bridge between all of us and community. If we can't be sitting in the same room, we can be thinking the same thoughts and be gathering here on the internet. It's, a, uh, it's not the same as being face to face and in the same place, but it's better than being totally isolated. So. Shabbat Shalom to you. We're continuing now the uh, study that I prepared for this week's Shulchan Shalonu. Shulchan Shalonu is a uh, weekly discussion guide that is distributed to subscribers' homes. We're around the table with family and friends and their children, of course. They uh, discuss the things of God and contemporary issues in light of what the scripture has to say. It's designed to be very user-friendly, and I hope you'll find it user-friendly as we share some of it with you, courtesy of the generosity of the subscribers of Shulchan Shalanu, who are enabling me to offer these uh, broadcasts to you free of charge. But I will invite you to subscribe, too. It's not expensive. It's about the price of a cafe latte a week. <laughs> You're not going to Starbucks uh, very much now anyway. But for the price of a cafe latte, you can be, uh, you can your family can be built up, and we'd like to see that happen. So, uh, this week's Torah passage talks about the finishing of the building of the tabernacle, and we talked uh, yesterday about the Torah passage and about how it talks about the various kinds of gifts people brought. They brought their stuff. They brought wool, purple, scarlet yarn, precious stones. Uh, they they brought their abilities. And then God also gave certain people special abilities. He gave uh, Bezalel and Aholiab special ability in carving and in, in craftsmanship. And uh, they also trained other people. And then there are the artisans who build the ta built the tabernacle. And there was Moses, who was the general contractor of the tabernacle. And there was God, who drew the blueprint, because he said to Moses, Be sure you do this according to the pattern shown you on the mount. So all of these various abilities and talents enabled Israel to build community. And we're thinking a lot about community right now. We ought to think about what it takes to build community. So let's continue with that theme now and talk especially about spiritual gifts uh, and, and about, the, about the spirit himself, really about the Ruach, about the spirit, who we read in this passage uh, after Moses and the children of Israel had finished building this whole resplendent tabernacle and all their sacrifices and everything, then God came and he filled the place. The place was, not, was nothing but a building until God filled it. He filled the place and he led the people through the wilderness. So that makes us think about the Spirit. And we read this. In today's parasha, we read about the Ruach, the Spirit of God, empowering Bezalel and Aholiav, filling them, gifting them, and about the presence of God filling the tabernacle and guiding the people of Israel. Then we give you five ways to think about the presence of the Ruach as it pertains to your life. And this might help you as you think about your life and as you think about Scripture. Let's just look at these briefly. First, there's the Ruach present, the omnipresence of God. There is no place in, in, in the universe where God is not present. Uh, King David says, where can I flee from your presence? If I go to heaven, you are there. If I go to Sheol, you are there. If I go to the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your right hand shall lead me. So God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. Secondly, there's the Ruach prior. This is God's work in your life prior to your acknowledging him. You didn't believe in him. You didn't think about him. You may have been running away from him consciously or unconsciously. But he worked in you prior to your coming to volitionally say, welcome his presence. He was at work previous to your wanting to pay attention to him. That's the spirit prior. Thirdly, there's a ruach within. As we come into Yeshua faith, we experience an infusion of the spirit. He produces the fruit of the spirit in us. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness faith, meekness, temperance, all of those things, those character qualities are the gift of the Spirit within us, creating fruit 
and also enabling us to understand the things of God in a way that we could not before. Number four, the Ruach upon. The Spirit comes upon people from time to time to especially gift us and empower us for a particular work. You remember Yeshua told us his disciples at the end of the Gospel of Luke, he says, I don't want you to leave Jerusalem. And he says also, uh, report in the book of Acts, he says, don't re leave uh, uh, Jerusalem until the Spirit, of, the Spirit comes upon you, until you receive the gift that my Father promised. Because they were not ready. They had spent three and a half years with him. They had observed him closely. They had had a 40-day seminar with him post-resurrection in which he talked about the kingdom of God. But he said, don't, go, don't get started yet. You're not ready until you're empowered by the Spirit. So the Spirit comes upon us to empower us. And finally, there's a Ruach among. When the people of God gather, there's supposed to be a climate in which we can interact with each other and in which the Spirit works among us as a body, uh, each part doing its work. And we are all a healthier community and we're healthier as individuals because we're plugged into this body where all these systems of the Spirit are working. That's all we have to talk about today. But I'm going to come back tomorrow about this time, and we're going to continue talking about giftedness. So I hope you'll come. And in this time of uh, contemplation and of separation, may you not feel separated from God. May you contemplate that relationship. And may you contemplate, as I do, how much the people you're separated from mean to you and you to them. This is Rabbi Dr. Stuart Dowerman from Interfaithfulness, where we're building bridges, where history builds walls. Shalom for now.